Once in a while we all want to stand out and the best way to do it is to change up your wardrobe and wear something very unique that nobody has. Welcome back to another video guys and today we're going to customize some jeans. I'm going to put not only one but four faces on there and it's going to be a lot of work and a lot of fun. So let's go ahead and take a look how these came out. If you're new here, welcome. My name is Ernie and I customize just about anything from branded merchandise for your business and one-off gifts like these custom jeans. We do jackets, shirts, and shoes. So let's go ahead and carry on with this project. The cool thing about airbrushing is you can apply paint to just about any surface and it really looks nice when you're done. In this case, we're gonna do portraits, but of course you can go crazy and put designs and text on your jeans as well. And uh, But today we're gonna do four portraits and they're all gonna be on the front. There is no special preparation for this. You just uh, receive the item and start shooting. Uh, I do recommend for people that do uh, airbrushing to, uh, you know, ask the client to send their own jeans or to purchase jeans for you. This way you don't have to worry about any like fitting issues and stuff like that. I know a lot of people like their jeans to fit a certain way and I prefer for the customer to bring in their jeans knowing that they're going to fit, they're going to love the way those jeans are going to fit them and of course all we got to do is decorate them. We're going to be using our paper stencil and we're just trying to get the outline of the face and some of the features like the eyes, nose and mouth. Uh, so we're going to do kind of like a two stage stencil here, uh, black and white. These particular jeans are fairly light so I don't have to put that much white but if you are doing black jeans or you know very dark blue jeans I recommend for you to put a lot of um, white down before you put uh, any like skin color on there this way it really pops against the, uh, the dark item. The cool thing about this process is that you can take old jeans and kind of revamp them or you can take uh, you know jeans from the thrift store and give them new life make them fun add colors and stuff like that and that'll be just your own and they'll fit the way you definitely want them to fit so uh yeah a lot of people have been you know customizing jeans for a long time um i've seen a lot of people doing you know uh section insertions of different materials uh painting uh with a regular brush airbrushing them uh dyeing them um just a whole bunch of stuff and uh, you know it's kind of cool how people uh, get creative and add uh, their own style and their own vibe uh, to look a little bit different from everybody else. You know, one of my main objectives when I'm doing this type of work is to make sure that whatever I'm painting really pops against the canvas or the shirt, whatever I'm painting. Uh, and uh, the way I do that is I make sure that any subtle colors or any bright colors will have a white base under them. So I got to make sure I lay down really thick and uh, a lot of layers of white. This way I have a nice base for the additional colors that, that are going to go on there. In addition, um, I want to make sure that my design is uh, a different color than the, the garment. So uh, in this case, it works really good because, um, you know, the garment is light. So we're doing something a little bit darker and then the garment itself is kind of like light blue and then skin color is like a brown, which is a perfect combination. It goes well with those uh, those two colors. In addition, I want to go a step further and try to tie in both items together and the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to apply a blue but a little darker blue than the actual jeans and that'll give me a pop of color that'll make the face really stand out and uh, it'll help me separate it a little bit from the jean itself and it'll look really nice. One of the challenges for this particular project is to get all the faces kind of similar uh, size. Uh, this way they look um, you know, they look proportionate to each other, they're balanced, you know, you don't have one face that's smaller than the other one, but at the same time, you wanna 
keep some of the uh, features of the portrait for example like the hair or like the shoulders a little bit at the neck area so uh, finding a happy medium between the sizes is very important so that's something that you have to plan out uh, before even starting to uh, to airbrush or paint so um, I kind of do that with uh, you know with measuring tape and just trying to figure out what the average size of a face should be and kind of going and printing out my stencils if I see that the stencil is too small too big I'll go back and reprint that stencil this way everything looks nice and sized and uh, we're good to go those white highlights really come in handy and they really tie everything together and that's actually my favorite uh, you know point in the process of painting not only because it's obviously the last step but you get to kind of give it that last dimension that you know makes it look more realistic especially in the eyes so while I have white paint on the airbrush I want to go ahead and take advantage and uh, put down my signature on that right uh, leg and that's where I wanted it to be uh, so I have the white paint ready to go so I'm just gonna go ahead and put that right now before I you know disassemble everything and remove the uh, paneling and try to move to the uh, to the other leg this way I'm not going back and forth so I'm gonna go ahead and do that now After I finish each face, I'm going to go ahead and apply a, a coat of Autoborn Sealer. You can do that or you can use um, the gloss that uh, Kratex has. And it's just a little extra layer just to protect uh, the paint. In addition to that, I'm going to allow it to dry. And then I'm going to come back with my iron and set everything uh, onto the fabric itself. This way it lasts a little bit longer. As far as carrying instructions, I always recommend for you to cold wash all your custom items, whatever that may be. And uh, you can definitely throw them in the dryer. It's okay to throw them in there. I actually recommend for you to uh, throw your items in the dryer at the highest setting. Uh, whenever you buy something customized from any airbrush artist or you know anybody that you know custom painted your your items, I would recommend for you to throw them in the dryer. This way, the uh, the paint kind of sets onto the fabric just in case the artist didn't do it uh, and I you know it'll go a little bit longer than usual uh, obviously do not use any like uh, Clorox or anything like that it'll ruin the paint so other than that you know you can always uh, throw it in the in the washer for sure let's go ahead and take a look at the final results I always recommend if you are an artist and haven't uh, explored, you know, outside of canvases, painting on canvases, I recommend for you to try something new, paint some jeans, paint some uh, jackets, uh, you know, pretty much anything. Uh, it gives you another level of uh, creativity. Sometimes, uh, you know, you have different issues when it comes to like painting certain things and it's always nice to kind of continue developing uh, your skills and stuff like that so uh, yeah so hopefully you guys enjoy this project let me know what the what you guys think of the jeans I think they came out pretty nice uh, and uh, yeah I mean that's gonna be crazy like uh, watching someone uh, or this particular customer walk down the street with those custom jeans I mean they look crazy so I really enjoy uh, working on, on these so for now I'm gonna leave you and uh, hopefully I'll see you guys in the next video so take it easy for now and have a good one bye bye